Now let's look at the, another um, behavior of mixed view model. And in this case, let's look at the, their response to the data frequencies. Okay. So uh, what you're seeing now is basically the likelihood function for the two word document. And we know in this case, the solution is to give text a probability of 0.9 and the a probability of 0.1. Now, it's interesting to think about a scenario when we start adding more words to the document. So what would happen if we add many this to the document? Now, this will change the game, right? So how? Well, picture what would the likelihood function look like now? Well, let's start with the likelihood function for the two words. Right? As we add more words, we know that we have to just multiply the likelihood function by additional terms to account for the additional occurrences of the. Since in this case, all the additional terms are the, we're going to just multiply by this term right? so for the probability of the. And if we have another occurrence of the, we multiply the again by the same term, and so on and so forth, until we uh, add as many um, terms as the number of this that we add to the document, d prime. Now this obviously changes the likelihood function. So what's interesting is now to think about the, how would they change our uh, solution. So what's the optimal solution now? now Intuitively, you would know the original solution, 0.9 versus 0.1, will no longer be optimal for this new function, right? But the question is, how should we change it? Well, in general, there's sum to 1. So in order to change it, we must take away some probability mass from one word and add the probability mass to the other word. The question is, which word to have a reduced probability and which word to have a larger probability? And in particular, let's think about the probability of the. Should it be increased to be more than 0.1? Or should we decrease it to less than 0.1? What do you think? Now, you might want to pause the video a moment uh, to think more about this question, because uh, this has to do with understanding of important behavior of uh, a mixture model, and indeed all the um, maximum likelihood estimator. Now, if you look at the formula for a moment, then you will see uh, it seems that the, now the objective function is more influenced by the than text. Before, each contributed one term. So now, as you can imagine, it would make sense to actually assign a smaller probability for text and to make room for a larger probability for the. Why? Because the is repeated many times. If we increase it a little bit, it will have more positive impact. Whereas a slight decrease of text will have a relatively small impact because it occurred just once. Right? So uh, this means there is another behavior that um, we observe here. That is, high frequency words generally will have, have high probabilities uh, from all the distributions. And this is uh, no surprise at all, because after all, we are maximizing the likelihood of the data. So all the, the more a word occurs, then it's, it's, it makes more sense to give such a word a higher probability, because the impact will be more on the likelihood function. This is, in fact, a very general phenomenon of all the maximum likelihood estimator. But in this case, we can see, as we uh, see more occurrences of term, it also encourages the unknown distribution, theta sub d, to assign a somewhat higher probability to this word. Now, it's also interesting to think about the impact of probability of theta sub b, the probability of choosing a, one of the two component models. Now, we've been so far assuming that each model is equally likely, and that gives us 0.5. But you can again look at this uh, likelihood function and try to picture what would happen if we increase the probability of choosing a background model. Now you will see those um, these terms for the will have a different form where the probability of that would be uh, even larger because uh, the background has a high probability for the word and the coefficient in front of 0.9 uh, which is now 0.5 would be even larger. When this is larger, the overall result would be larger. And that also makes it less important for theta sub d to increase the probability for the, because it's already very large. 
So the impact here of increasing the probability of the is somewhat regulated by this coefficient, 0.5. If it's larger on the background, then it becomes less important to increase the value. So this, the, this means the behavior here, uh, which is high frequency words, tend to get high probabilities, are affected or regularized somewhat by the probability of choosing each component. The more likely a component is being chosen, it's more important to have higher values for these frequent words. If you have a very small probability of being chosen, then the incentive is less. So to summarize, uh, we have just uh, uh, discussed uh, the mixture model uh, and we uh, discussed uh, the estimation problem of mixture model and in particular we discussed some general behavior of uh, the estimate and that means uh, we can expect the, our estimate uh, to capture these intuitions. First, every component, component model attempts to assign high probabilities to high frequent words in the data. And this is to collaboratively maximize likelihood. Second, different component models tend to bet on about uh, high probabilities on different words. And this is to avoid a competition or waste of probability. And this would allow them to collaborate more efficiently to maximize the likelihood. Third, the probability of choosing each component uh, regulates the collaboration and competition between the component models. It would allow uh, some component models to respond more to the change, for example, of frequency of uh, data point in the data. We also talk about the special case of fixing one component to a background word distribution. Right? And this distribution can be estimated by using a collection of documents, a large collection of English documents, uh, by using just one distribution. And then we'll just have normalized frequencies of terms to uh, give us the probabilities of all these words. Now, when we use such a specialized mixture model, uh, we show that we can effectively get rid of background words in the other component. And that would make the discovered topic more discriminative. This is also an example of imposing a prior on the model parameters. And the prior here basically means one model must be exactly the same as the background language model. And if you recall what we uh, talked about in Bayesian estimation, and this prior would allow us to favor a model that's consistent with our prior. Uh, in fact, if it's not consistent, we're going to say the model is impossible. So it has a zero prior probability. And that effectively excludes such a scenario. Uh, this is also an issue that we'll uh, talk more later.